Bolivia to organize 3A distribution events for the local residents in need. Take a look at the inspiring story of the new shoe scholarship receiver Sun Yilun, who suffers from osteodystrophy. Selamat datang ke The Headline, saya Simon Gan. Terima kasih menyertai sesi berita kita. In Bolivia, Sitja organized 3A distribution events for residents in need. Many young locals also volunteered to help with the distribution. Volunteers increased their pace to unload the goods as local residents sat in a row eagerly awaiting supplies. Some people even went out early in the morning and walked for nearly two hours hoping to collect aid. It takes about one and a half or two hours to come here. If I walk faster, I can arrive earlier. If I walk slowly, it will take more time. Thanks God for helping every one of his people. I'm so grateful for your help. Thank you very much for giving us these supplies. Tsuzi organized 3A distribution events in Bolivia. 15 Tsuzi volunteers worked together and local youth also came to help. Thank you to the Foundation for giving me this opportunity to be a volunteer to serve others. My heartfelt gratitude for allowing me to learn the joy of serving others. I'm very grateful to the Master for giving us the chance to serve. During volunteering, we learned to humble and happy. Thank you, Master. This small basketball court became the distribution site. Hundreds of families received living supplies and finally felt relief. The mayor especially presented souvenirs to show appreciation. This sculpture represents the clock tower of our city. Every time I give it to the group that assists us, now I am giving it to you representing our friendship. Thank you, Master Zheng Yan. You are our role model. These supplies are very useful to us. Many people are in need of these materials. Thank you for your generous donation, which is also our goal in learning. Due to the epidemic, Tsuji keeps spreading love unconditionally, accompanying people in need during these difficult times. Despite the pandemic, Tsuji volunteers continue to care for the people in Mozambique. In Maputo, aid distributions will help to safeguard the health and well-being of the disadvantaged families. <laughs> People in Mozambique hope to stand up again, yet this year we encountered the novel coronavirus epidemic. What we advocate is unconditional love, which is the same among different ethnicities. Today, the Maputo city government and the INGC government are very concerned about everyone's lives and sought TGs for assistance. These materials are not just food, but also consist of plenty of love. Besides, there are two bars of soap. Would everyone please wash your hands more often and continue to protect yourself? Because protecting yourself and your family is the best love and respect for others. <laughs> I have four children and my wife is sick again, so I'm the breadwinner of my family. Yet because of the epidemic, I lost my job. We can only live by aid. Such a living is not really easy. We can only remain optimistic and believe there is always a way out. This is not the first time for Zigi to provide support and assistance to our disadvantaged group. The supplies everyone received are full of love from TG. Amanhã, 
Spanish también pasó nuestro amor para el próximo. In the Philippines, three volunteers went to the Calocan Sports Complex to distribute aid supplies to 897 chimney drivers. They also gave back by donating to the Bamboo Coin Bank. The entire stadium was filled with chimney drivers whose livelihoods have been hit by the pandemic. TGA's distribution is still continuing. Initially, I was scared to go out, but then I realized that we have a lot of volunteers. Um, even though volunteers who are a little of more age already, who are going out and um, helping in the actual field. So I realized that as a city member, um, we pledge that whenever there's help needed, we will go out. Um, we will do whatever we can. Rice, dry food and a bed of supplies per person are enough to make them survive this harsh time. You offered a helping hand to these drivers, and it was a three-month period of assistance. This is a great help to them. Throughout the distribution process, volunteers put their hands together and vote again and again. The gratefulness has extended to the Dripley drivers, who pay back by donating to Bamboo Com Bank. Although I don't have a lot to donate, I know that Zuji will gather these donations together to bring great help to others. Zuji not only provides material assistance, but also teaches the beneficiaries how to give back and feel grateful for the blessings they have received. Giving our sincere care in the difficulties of life, Zuji volunteers are always there by the people in need. Sports science not only helps athletes, but also helps normal people like us. In our feature report, we're going to take a look at how sports science is being popularized in today's world. The act of just stepping on the ball takes extra time and patience for this child to accomplish than a normal person. Without any guidance, children who suffer from cerebral palsy, like Cho Guan Hong, will The contraction will become more serious and then the entire heart and lung function will decrease faster. Patients with special illnesses, especially children, need to do sports. As we aged, like when during puberty, the weight increases, many people at this stage couldn't walk and end up sitting on electric wheelchairs. Once a week, Zheng Xiangwei goes to a nearby township's middle school to help children. The whole afternoon is a physical education period dedicated to students of special needs. <laughs> Guan Hong started from a mobility aid to a single-handed walking stick. Sometimes he doesn't even need assistance as he walks faster than others. The way he teaches the children, we as teachers could learn it too and to bring that into our courses so that children may continue. In the past about 10 years, it was all Daling Tiji Hospital cooperating with Jai city government. These children here, some of them I've known since they were in kindergarten. They are almost taller than me now. In a broad sense, Sports medicine does not only apply to professional athletes or players, it also includes students or the seniors farming in the countryside. In the Chinese medicine clinic, the patient is pointing out pain towards her waist and legs. Oh, I do a lot of labor. It's not because of sports. I'm too busy for that. Sports and labor are different, but we still have to think what is the cause of her injury, whether it's her posture or what she has done led to her situation today. I've done this for decades. I carry heavy things and my spine is dislocated. It's tiring. Forming since young to an old age, the repetitive movement in labor causes muscles to become exhausted and even causes injury. We have to stabilize her muscles and strengthen her skeletal system so that her body can cope with the labor work. This should be accomplished by sports. As Taiwan is an aging society, 
Jiayi, Nantou, and Yuning County ranked in the top three in senior population. People suffering from dementia also reached 30,000, meaning that in every 80 people, there is one person with dementia. Dementia doesn't limit movement. In theory, moving is an instinct and one won't forget how to move, but they might get more inconsistent with movement and lose the motivation to move because of a fear of falling. Although they have a bit of dementia, if they can do sports and combine with recognition, these two elements adding together may help delay dementia. How do we raise the levels of these weak patients? We look at it from a prevention perspective to let them not degenerate at a fast pace. Patients who have special diseases, long-term laborers, or even seniors with dementia, their illnesses will get worse without doing sports. Sporting is the guardian angel as it protects seniors from aging and prevents illnesses from emerging. The Cixi Foundation has been cooperating with Cixi University of Science and Technology and the national government to launch a long-term care course for Philippine students starting from 2019. The program hopes to nurture more professional caregivers. For a report, as we learn more. The elderly population is increasing. Now the government is pushing long-term care 2.0. We have also heard that many news media say that long-term care is very scarce, especially frontline care attendants. So this is a policy which the government is promoting, and universities should have the social responsibility to cultivate the talent which society needs. <laughs> Ziji <laughs> <laughs> after Typhoon Haiyan in 2013, visited some tribes or villages in the Philippines, some very badly affected places with the hopes of building great love villages. We hope to continue the kindness and love at that time and continue this cycle. So now our plan is to seek students in the Philippines. The first time students come to Taiwan, they encounter some problems in the beginning because of language barrier, and they're not used to local food. This is not to mention that they're in a new environment. They find it's hard to accept that we have to deal with this kind of problem a lot in the beginning. Some may even become emotional. So we also passed them to through Ida mothers, and we also have a Filipino Ida mother who set up a care group. At that time, she was very active in helping students and did a lot of counseling to help them adapt. So the 18 people I know now are actually very stable in their development. <laughs> From the beginning, we asked them why you came here. They will tell you very clearly they want to become professional long-term care worker. I think this is a big change as they also know that it's an opportunity to turn their lives around. So when they're in class, all the teachers who have attended our class will feel their responsibility is very enthusiastic and positive. They will always ask a lot of questions. I think they are very serious when it comes to learning. I saw that they are very serious and focused. I feel that they will really work together and be very involved in class activities. Although they may have problems with the language, they can intersperse Chinese with English to let the teacher understand what they're thinking. So many teachers who have been in this class feel it is very different. Their learning attitude is very positive. where are you? Hi, I'm looking at you. I hope that the school's first class curriculum and planning can allow us to develop a type of brand in the future, which is dedicated to training long-term care attendants.
What we call a brand is what these students know. They are very different because they are the first generation of frontline long term care givers cultivated by our Tsuji Long Term Care Institute. CUSD. Kami ay nandito sa Tsuji University of Science and Technology. In Kaohsiung, there's a physically challenged student, Sun Yi Lun, who suffers from osteodystrophy. He has won medals in speech and swimming contests and is a winner of the Presidential Educational Award. This year is the third year he has won the New Shoe Scholarship Award. Let's take a look at his story. My name is Sun Yi Lun, and many people call me One Wheel. I want to live a fulfilling life that has four wheels. Oh. Sun Yi Lun has a small stature and high aspirations. He suffers from osteodystrophy. While he's 11 years old, his height is only 100 centimeters. Although he is physically challenged, he is mentally sound. He thinks he can get along with normal children. So he has asked us to let him live a fulfilling life. His mother gives him a ride to school. He has won medals in swimming and speech contests. However, he has yet to attend a sports meet. He told me and his classmates that he has never attended a sports meet. Since then, we have been hoping for him to join a sports meet and take part in a relay race. Although he's wheelchair bound, he still participated in a relay race. He's warm and positive. When he gave a speech about his life, many people in the audience moved to tears. I am also learning from Yi Lun. There are limitless possibilities in life. I've seen the possibilities on him. A tree with roots will grow up strong. People who is able to live have hope. Despite his fair health, he is very grateful. He has written a card to thank Dharma Master Zheng Yan for encouraging him. I do not know what will happen to me tomorrow. I hope if I leave the world earlier than my mother, she can help me thank the people who have helped me before. The courageous Sun Yilun will continue to seize every moment and live life to its fullest. In Vietnam, such volunteers not only provided scholarship aid to students from impoverished families, but also took the opportunity to educate them on environmental protection. In Travin province, a total of 190 families received the aid, and many of them have also brought back their bamboo coin banks. On the scholarship award ceremony, volunteers use props and detailed explanations to teach the students on how to do recycling work. By using simple recycling mnemonic, everyone can remember it with ease. Bottles, bottles, cans, cans, paper, electronic, 1357. To encourage the students from impoverished families to work hard in their studies, Vietnam Tsuji volunteers head to Travin province to carry out scholarship aid distribution. Besides the students and their parents, the school teachers also participated in the event. The spotlight of the event is to promote awareness on environmental protection. When I head to the market to buy vegetables with my mother, we will reduce the use of plastic bags and use a bamboo basket instead. Students also brought their bamboo coin bank back, accumulating all the kind thoughts and love from the students. In total, the donation collected was around 300 US dollars. I will teach my students on environmental protection, learning how to sort the recyclables, and also knowing to save money and help other students who are in need. A total of 190 families received the scholarship aid this year. With CG volunteers accompanying these students, the students are sure to have a bright future ahead of them. In Qinghai, China, CG volunteers head to the third Mingzhu High School to provide scholarship aid once every three months. Volunteers also prepared inspirational stories to encourage the students to stay strong and study hard for a better future. At the foothills of the Tibetan Plateau is the place where students are able to receive their education. At every corner of the school, hardworking students are seen, seizing every opportunity to learn. Whenever I think of the third Mingzhu High School in Chengdu, 
I'll think of the voices of the children reading in the school. These children are all excellent students. <laughs> After the snowstorm that hit Yushu last year, she volunteers not only carried out aid distributions, but also provided local students scholarships once every three months. <laughs> Suchi Foundation has helped many of our students, mainly those who lost both their parents or live with a single parent, low-income families and also disabled. A total of 80 students have received Suchi scholarship aid. After watching inspiring movies based on real-life stories, the students from impoverished families have the courage to continue to fight for their dreams. We are high school seniors now. Some students may not have the motivation to continue their studies anymore and have the thought of giving up. But the story has encouraged us to not give up. No matter the challenges we're facing, we need to stay strong and keep moving on. As long as the students are hardworking, they have a chance to change their lives. Nothing can stop great love as volunteers will continue to accompany these children for years to come. In Cambodia, many impoverished college students face financial difficulties during the pandemic. CG has worked together with a youth group to hold an aid distribution, benefiting 387 students. Three to four university students cramming to the six square meter dorm. Their public kitchen is also very crude. I've come to Phnom Penh to study. My parents are farmers. Facing the pandemic, our lives have become difficult. In Phnom Penh, college students who did not get into dorms have to rent apartments. To pay for the rent and daily expenses, they work for longer hours than they study. The rice I received from Tsuji last time sustained me for about half a year. Now that I have received supplies again, I do not have to worry. It is very costly to eat in restaurants. I can save money by cooking food. I am grateful to Tsuji for helping us again. Although they are poor students, they are kind-hearted. They are willing to save up in coin banks. Although it is little money, the accumulated strength can be great. The students who received Tsuji's help will continue to learn and grow, and when there's a chance, they can pass the love forward. In Taiwan, Tsuji volunteers from Luzhou brought Tsi Shaos to Bali to clean up the beach to teach the children about the importance of environmental protection. We'll leave you with these images. Thank you and goodbye.